Give me an idea of what you think is the most important thing that gets in between people and their dreams. What do you think is the thing that stands between most people and their dreams? Fear. Good. Fear. Procrastination. Negativity. Negativity. What else? Themselves. Themselves. Good. These are all great answers, and, and they're wrong. But <laughs> they're not wrong, but they're not the number one thing. The number one thing is something you wouldn't think of. See, I used to, <laughs> he said fear, okay. The number one thing is not what you think. I used to work for an internet company and I wanted to go full time into professional speaking. That's my goal, that's my dream. Raise your hand if you have a goal or a dream. Raise your hand if you want to do something in life. <laughs> and me too. So I went to the vice president of this company, a young guy, new guy, and he looked like a young Pat Riley, to be honest. Y yeah, and, and, well, you see, you're all interested. And, and I went to him and I said, John, I'm going to be leaving. Give you as much transition time as you need, but I'm going to be leaving because it's always been my dream to be a full-time professional speaker. He said, that's your dream, Craig? That's how you, that's how you talk. <laughs> I said, yes, it is. He said, well, that's great. I really admire you for having one, but you can't leave. <laughs> exactly. I said, what do you mean I can't leave? He said, because Craig, we've been thinking about it and we're going to raise your salary up to this. <laughs> Now, salary means the same thing in California, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I said, John, this is not a financial decision. This is about my dream. In fact, I call this a dream decision. He said, okay, I understand, I really do. Hey, but how about if we raise your salary up to this? Yeah, I said, this is not a financial decision, it's a dream. Do you know he raised it four times? <laughs> I kid you not, he kept saying, well, raise your salary to this. I said, this is not a financial decision, this is a dream decision. He said, okay, Craig, how about if we raise your salary to well above six figures? I said, dreams are overrated. <laughs> Come on now, six figures? That was a lot of money back then. That's good money today. <laughs> Fill up my gas tank for a week on that kind of salary. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So I said, John, look, before I say yes, I really have to talk to my wife about this, right? So, <laughs> I mean, don't we all? So I went home, I said to my wife, honey, I, I don't know what to do, what should I do, what should I do? And my wife looked up at me with her big brown eyes and said, take the money, fool! <laughs> Some of you already like my wife, don't you? <laughs> but if you had been sitting beside my wife and me just a few minutes later, on our black leather sofa, with the chocolate chip cook ba bakey, cookies baking in the background, you would have heard her say something that can absolutely change your life. I know it changed mine. She said, Craig, this is all you've ever wanted. Ever since we met, this is all you've ever talked about. I don't care how much they try to compensate you. Craig, your dream is not for sale. That's deep, isn't it? Anybody in here sell out? Huh? Your dream is not for sale. Because here's the thing, most people think the number one thing that gets in between them and their dreams is some kind of bad obstacle. A lack of money, a lack of time, a lack of talent. A lack... That's not it. The number one thing that gets in between your best dream is something good that we settle for. Good job, good marriage, good this. So let me ask you something. Are you too good to be great? Are you too comfortable in your good life to stretch out and reach greatness? Because sometimes the enemy of the best is the good. I looked at my wife, I said, see girl, that's why I married you. My dream is not for sale, right? That's what you said. So I went back in there the next day, I looked that vice president in his eyes and I was firm. I looked him directly in his face and I was bold and I said to him, my wife said my dream is not for sale. <laughs> But I left, and that very year I spoke over 160 times in 44 states and five countries, and I'm happy to say I've been running my mouth ever since. <laughs> but there's nothing special about me. There was something very special about the advice my wife gave me. Don't let the good get in the way of the best. Your dream is not for sale. And guess what? Neither is yours.